So the real numbers is the collection of all rational numbers, such as one half, and all irrational numbers, such as pi. To make this more rigorous, we introduce what's called the synthetic approach to the real numbers. In the synthetic approach, we define something called the real number system. The real number system consists of four objects taken as a whole, satisfying a number of axioms. The first of these objects is the collection of all the real numbers that we denote by R. The real number system also consists of two what we call binary operations on R, addition and multiplication. And it consists of a binary relation less than or equal to. These binary operations and the binary relation must satisfy a number of axioms, which are statements that are taken as true. In the synthetic approach, it's simply assumed that the real number system exists, including all the axioms. The synthetic approach is not the only approach to the real numbers. In other approaches, the real number system is basically constructed from the natural numbers. When we say that addition is a binary operation on R, we mean that addition combines or operates on two real numbers to produce another real number. When we say that less than or equal to is a binary relation on R, we mean that any two real numbers, A and B, may be compared, and when you make the comparison, the statement A less than or equal to B must always be true or false. So this is the way you can think of the real number system. First, we have the collection of all the real numbers. In this collection, we have one, we have minus three, we have square root of two, and so on. We have an operation that we call addition. We can feed any two real numbers into the additions operation, and it will return a real number. Similarly, for the multiplication operation, feed any two real numbers and it will return a real number. We also have the less than or equal to binary relation. If you feed any two real numbers into this relation, it will return true or false. If we combine this picture with the number of axioms, then we have the real number system. This starting point of most of mathematics. I will not cover all the axioms in this lecture. There are quite a few. But let's look at one example of these axioms. One axiom called the existence of additive identity states that the real numbers contain a unique element that we denote by zero. Let's say that zero is located right here among the real numbers. The axiom states that when zero is one of the arguments to the addition operation, then it does not matter what the other argument is, the result of the addition will be that other argument. The addition of zero and any number x will return x. This is consistent with the idea that mathematics is the manipulation of meaningless symbols. Zero is just one of these meaningless symbols, and this axiom states that this symbol belongs to the real numbers, and it states that the combination of symbols four plus zero is the same as the symbol four. In the synthetic approach, which is somewhat of a default approach to real numbers, you will never be asked to prove that four plus zero is four. It is one of the axioms, so we simply take it to be true. You may have noticed that subtraction and division are not part of the real number system. This is because the real number system must only contain properties that are so fundamental that they cannot be proved. Subtraction can actually be defined from addition. 7 minus 3, for example, is defined as 7 plus the additive inverse of 3. 7 plus negative 3. So subtraction is not a fundamental operation and that's why we leave it out of the real number system. 
Similarly, division is defined from multiplication.